is Everglades Agricultural Area Reservoir. It's a giant water bowl and one project planned to unleash the potential of decades worth of other Everglades restoration projects. The multi-million dollar reservoir finally broke ground last week. Will it live up to expectations? Eric Eichenberg is president and CEO of the Everglades Foundation. Eric, it's great to see you. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me, Glenna. Good to so see you. I feel like we have been reporting on this for my lifetime almost. Well, okay, a couple of decades at least. We've covered bridge raisings and other restoration projects, and this was always the unicorn. So what came together to finally break ground? Well, we had a number of years where we were seeing um, disasters, unfortunately, occur from Lake Okeechobee, where, where the lake would rise. And the only option is to open the gates east and west to the St. Lucie, which is near Stewart, Martin County, to the west, uh, Sanibel, Fort Myers, Lee County. And it would have a devastating impact because of the water is polluted. And all that polluted water east and west, then not having enough fresh water flowing south, as we saw in 2015, 50,000 acres of dead seagrass floating in Florida Bay. The system is out of balance and Everglades restoration is reconnecting Lake Okeechobee down to the Florida Keys. This project now, Glenn, as you point out, 22 years in the waiting will be that crown jewel of connecting the lake down to Florida Bay to store clean and send that water south. So this was not only about water quality, because we remember the green gunk and the fish kills, and that really bubbled into the public consciousness. But it's so it's about water quality, but also quantity. And so this reservoir, $4 billion is now the price tag. And uh, just to headline what's been going on for a couple of decades is a push and pull of all these stakeholders, big ag and the sugar needed water, the environment needs water. So will this smaller, I guess smaller and deeper version do what everyone is hoping it will do as a, as a reservoir and as a, a tank to hold and let it flow when man wants it? No doubt it has to it needs it's that new opportunity to send water south and water quality Glenna for the Everglades is non negotiable you have to send clean water south to the river of grass under the beautiful bridges along Tamiami trail. This reservoir will enable that opportunity to have water, not just for uh, a time when agriculture or sugar and I point out that they will receive a third of this water when this reservoir is built, but to have the fresh water flow throughout the course of the year. And when we have water flowing through the Everglades, it recharges the aquifer, the Biscayne Aquifer, which is the water supply now for almost seven and a half to eight million people in South Florida. So we get caught up, some, some people get caught up on the size of the acreage of this uh, reservoir itself. It's the volume. 120 billion gallons of water will flow south to the Everglades and make no mistake about it, that water must be clean. So how, how does the reservoir then assure the water is clean? How does that work? Well, there's about 50 to 60,000 acres of wetlands. I like to call them the kidneys of the Everglades that are in the Everglades agricultural area today. That's south of Lake Okeechobee, uh, primarily used to clean up big sugars uh, water that comes off those uh, cane fields. Uh, this reservoir will have an accompanying kidney or a filtration that will then uh, effectively remove the phosphorus and the nitrogen that's in the water, the pollutants that we see on the east and west coast that cause the environmental and economic harm. And and if, if, and it's a big if, but we have time to play this out, if there is an issue where the water is not cleaned or there's a question about the cleanliness of the water within this reservoir, there are tools in the toolbox to ensure that additional lands are, are, take, are used, I should say, additional lands are used to effectively send that clean water south. You know, the um, we, we've actually talked about this over the years. The In our divided times when the us versus them rhetoric is on full blast, it seems, environmental issues and the Everglades is just something everybody gets behind. The governor has, I, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but easily over a billion dollars and, um, and the Biden administration I know has its share of it. Um, it. But this is this without opposition? Well, you're right. This is a unifying issue. We all need water to drink. And it is a it is a it is an issue that brings both parties together. You mentioned Governor DeSantis, um, who has committed now three point five billion over the next four years. That's on top of a historic investment over the previous four. And then when we're in Washington working with folks like Debbie Wasserman Schultz, Lois Frankel on the Democrat side, uh, you mentioned the White House. It is a unifying. And 
my political mentor, Clay Shaw, uh, from South Florida, who was the author of the comprehensive Everglades Restoration Plan, he made sure 20 years ago, 22 years ago, that it, it made sense to have this be a unifying issue. And the bipartisanship within Everglades Restoration runs deep. And we need to we need to stay the course. These next number of years, the funding out of uh, Washington, out of Tallahassee, back to this reservoir, this critical project must be built. We need both both federal and state government to step up in a big way to get this project over the finish line by the end of the decade. And you are such an effective advocate for all of this. So what what is the timeline on this? Well, they broke ground on the on the 23rd uh, of February. The the dirt is moving out there within the Everglades Agricultural Area Reservoir. The Army Corps is responsible for the construction of that project, uh, scheduled to be completed by 2030. The good news is the state is responsible to build the kidney, the filtration marsh. That's uh, 6,500 acres that will complement this reservoir. That will be completed this September. So the state is ahead of schedule on its portion of this project. Now working with our congressional delegation and other members of Congress from around the country. This is America's Everglades. This is a national treasure. And we need all members from the uh, U.S. Senate and House to step forward as they plan the budget process over the next number of months to give robust funding to this Everglades Reservoir. And Glenna, the good news is President Biden signed legislation last year that now makes it a national priority. These funding dollars are going to flow quickly, we hope, over the next number of years. Eric Eichenberg, President and CEO of the Everglades Foundation. Keep in touch. As always, great to have you. Great to see you. Thank you, Glenna.